Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. What's up, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? Very tropical. And what's up, Funky? What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. How y'all doing today? Ah, I'm alive, child. (laughs) <laughs> that's all i got for you today i'm alive okay and al's on vacation got the tropical shirt on i'm pulling a claudia jordan i'm out in the water by the beach all day drinking too much and just trying to usa and enjoy my time here in Allen. Q, Q, you hear him talking he got the real slow draw mm-hmm. <laughs> where you at al in tulum <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm at Riviera Maya, which is oh. outside of Tulum. Maya Riviera. That, that, that's where I was just at in July for the Caribbean Fest. It's real nice out there. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm still in L.A. Uh, I rushed from set to get here. I'm doing a horror film, and I cannot show you my hands right now because it's like fake blood all over me. And I washed up as much as I could, but this is what we're working with right now. Do you see this? Do you see that? Mm. I can't wait for y'all to see this project. It was a lot going on today. But all right, are we drinking today or not? Well, Al, we know you're drinking. <laughs> Al's drinking. I got my sweet tea. You okay. some good. I guess I'm the resident drinker here. I mean, if the shoe fits, put that MF on. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Well, I didn't get a chance to, but I, uh, I'm definitely going to go meet up with the girls tonight and go grab me a little something because I think I'm off tomorrow. But all right, y'all, let's get into these hot topics. Uh, Billie Eilish, Eilish uh, called out Variety for outing her during her red carpet interview at the Variety Hitmakers Brunch. Billie wrote, thanks, Variety, for my award and for also outing me on a red carpet at, at 11 a.m. instead of talking about anything else that matters. She also mentioned that she never planned to officially come out and announce her sexuality. All right, Al, let's go to you first. How do you feel about this? What do you think? I, I, mm, I didn't understand it because we know on November 13th in the interview that came out in Variety, she addressed it. She said that women usually make her uncomfortable, but she finds herself attracted to women and that she is really, really attracted to to beautiful women. So of course that suggested to them that it was okay that when she they then saw her on the carpet on December 2nd to then ask her about it. So I, I'm really confused. I understand being 19. I understand feeling like you're outed. I, I totally get that. But you definitely planted a seed. You told a uh, paper, you told a media source that you are in fact, attracted to women. And then when she was confronted about it, she says that she thought people knew already. So which is it? Either you want people to know or you don't want people to know. Now, is it okay to be outed? I totally disagree with that. I think outing someone feels dated. I think out having someone to have to come out feels dated. And and I feel like it also could be harmful because what that ha- what that does is it make people hide it even more. You just don't feel comfortable. So on that side of the argument, I agree with her. On the front side of the argument of her blaming them for outing her, it started with your conversation, sweetheart. So there has to be some accountability there. Uh, Damon Dobbins said her sexuality was well known. Max Hem said, I mean, she has a point, but girl, you're mad clockable like we've been knowing. And Rosemary Watson said, wasn't she dating a woman a little while ago? Q, what do you think about this? Listen, y'all, tonight I'm just not even in the mood to be jovial and comical. Girl, you look like a whole lesbian. Like, stop. You look like a whole lesbian. A whole one. Not even a, a whole one. On the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Please stop. All right? And then the, the other thing that I don't like is Typically, when somebody feels outed, there is a a feeling of shame and anger and upset, and they kind of, you know, they go into hiding a little bit. You know, you further exacerbated your so-called outing. It's just giving me, I'm 19, 20, and I just want to make a fuss out of something because that's just what we do at our age We just make fusses out of things because we can, because we have a platform. 
But girl, I don't even know your music. I'm 40 and you 19, but I can look at you and smell the lesbian off the pictures. Please stop. KJ said she lost over 100,000 followers. That's why she's mad. And Last King said it's 2023, Billy. Live in your truth, Hunter. Yo, are you bored, Billy? Are, are you bored? I, I, I feel like people just like to be fake outrage about things. Now, it'd be one thing if she's never given us any hints, any clues, any right. shown any inclination of that. You know, we'd be like, and we just, you know, put her on blast. You have a point. Or if he was trying to be secretive, or you was even trying to be coy, like, you know, I don't talk about that, and someone exposed her. But when you're doing the interviews, what the hell do you think interviews are for? To get into your mm -hmm. brain and to know more about you. And when you say these things, you can't then turn around and be outraged when the press assumes what you said is the truth. Right. That is what though, Q, how do you smell it from the picture? <laughs> I don't know, but I want to I want to address bubblegum peach. Bubblegum peach, miss me with the sexist bullshit. So it's respect people in the closet until it's a woman. Your arm and your shoulder should be broke right now, bubblegum reach. Ooh. But bubblegum peach, from how far you just reached. It ain't got nothing to do with her being a woman versus being a man and everything to do with what Al just said. Apparently, you must have just turned into tuned into the show. She did an interview in November talking about liking girls. So what are you talking about, Bubblegum Peach? Go to the next thing, Claudia. <laughs> Go to the next thing. <laughs> I just swear some of our viewers and some of the listeners and some of the commenters sometimes just be less than smart. And actually, there's other celebrities that do this too. Like, oh, I can't yeah, believe out of me. I'm like, wait, what? Okay. All right. Rapper Chameleon said, real bitches use their nostrils as an extra hole during sex. She claims that nostrils open up like booty holes. In the prompter it says, have y'all ever tried this? But I don't even want to ask y'all that. So what do you think about the uh, nostrils being holes number one, two, three, four, four, five, six? <laughs> Remember we talked about this, are we, are we using the nostrils are we using ears? What are we doing? Remember yeah. we talked about it? Do you guys remember we talked about this on the show? We said there were four holes. Do y'all remember what the four holes were? Booty, mouth, booty, mouth. The mouth, the tussy cat, the booty, and the man's booty. Y'all remember that story? No. But don't the man's booty and the woman's booty constitute the same hole if the woman's <laughs> mouth and the man's mouth constitutes the same hole? Yeah, booty is booty, right? Right. All I want to know is what, what preteen is she having sex with? A nose? My penis hasn't been that small since I was in the third or fourth grade. If you try to stick it in somebody's nose, like that don't even make any sense to me. Like, where did she make this up and from? So just th imagine the visuals of the person that's receiving it in their nose. So they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, can, can you just imagine that? I can't actually. You yeah, know what? Y'all Y'all know good and damn well there is not a person on earth taking dick up the nose. The <laughs> nose does not stretch. It 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 simply doesn't. All right. And this is what happens when we now live in a Sukiana sexy red, the girl with the period string hanging from her stuff. Uh, Krishan Rock, this is just, unfortunately, the media period that we now live in. And I'm going to add some texture to this. I'm going to tell you why Chameleon makes me exceptionally sick to my stomach in comparison to the rest of the girls. She's from Jacksonville, comes from a very educated mother. Her mother's a politician. I, if, I can't remember if she's a city commissioner or a councilwoman. She's one of those. Chameleon is a trained opera singer, okay? Wow. Educated. She's not from the hood. She's not raunchy like the rest of these girls with multiple baby daddies. She doesn't have a prison background. What trained opera singer do you know is hood, all right? And 
and that's why I hated her on Love and Hip Hop because I know people from Jacksonville who actually know her. She was Miss Black and Gold at one point. All right, all of it's an act. This mm -hmm. is not even who this girl is, and it's sickening that for whatever reason, this is what people think they now have to do in order to be relevant. I was so happy for her when she was no longer on Love and Hip Hop Miami. And believe it or not, my friend James Knox was the one who referred her to Issa Rae in order to be on rap shit. I loved when she got that because I was like, that's more of where she belongs. She's a trained artist. She's got it going on. And then just now for you to be over here with this podcast, and I'm going to say something else too. I love Angela Yee. Um, that lip service podcast, it, 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 it's just something about women approaching the age of 50 and 40-year-old women sitting around calculating like goddamn 14-year-olds talking about sex up the nose. And in 2023, y'all, have we not had every sex conversation there is to have? Have we not? Well, we've never had the sex up the nose one, though. I But I I just wish me and my friends my age would just be sitting around. Yeah, Al, you know, because one time, you know, I had a nigga put it up my nose and they be taking, like, <laughs> y'all ain't got nothing else to talk about. And I know it's a sex podcast, but in 2023, can we be done with this? Uh, You know what? I, I'm I'm down to bring back shame for some of this stuff. Because no one has, there's no bottom anymore. There's no, again, I always say race to the bottom. It's not even a sprint. It's a marathon because it seems like it keeps going and going and going. And it's like, when are we going to get to, just when I think we're at the bottom, someone goes a little bit further and a little bit more disgusting and a little bit more stupid. Girl, ain't no one taking no dick in their nose. At all. All right. Do you want to read any comments? Are we, are we moving on? Let's move on. I mean, Janice, Janice Weston says, he has a Vienna sausage. I've seen a grown man with a Vienna. Sean <laughs> Hiley said, it's not who she is, but who she vicariously wants to be. And our country C said, just because you come from a pristine background do not mean you're not a hoe. It don't, but it damn sure means you're not hood. And Nikwa J said, from singing opera to getting hunched in the nose. <laughs> I'm, I'm really tired of humans. Like, I'm really tired of this. Like, nobody wants to be, like, there's no there's no striving for excellence with a large portion of the population. Of course, not all. But you see these people that say this stuff, unfortunately, it gets rewarded. And there's lots of people lining up and buying into it. That's the problem. There's certain right. people who have to do it. I didn't mean to jump you. No, no. The Sookies and the Sexy Reds, for whatever it's worth, they have to do it. All right. Life dealt them a shitty hand. They have to do it. Educated women with talent, you don't have to do this. And that's why I got particular smoke for her. She should be ashamed of her damn self. She should be. All right. Well, on to the next Sexy Red. Claim she was just joking when she spoke about joining the Illuminati, but fans are not convinced. Take a look. <laughs> yes, they got me in this. Shit. I don't know. I can't get out of it. I'm getting too much money. I'm getting too much money. I don't want to get out of it. That's what I wanted to hear. Now I'm saying it. Someone wrote, She is not joking. She is dead serious. Her music is trash and she blew up quicker than a balloon. What do y'all think? Do you think there's any possibility she may be in the uh, Illuminati, Al? I'm still actually trying to understand the Illuminati, but I mean, if that means that the Illuminati can take a person from, where was she from, guys? Chicago? St. Louis. St. Louis, she somewhere, somewhere over there and, 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 and blow up that quick. I, I mean, you know, this past year has been a whirlwind for her, for sure. She is getting the bag. Um, so, I mean, does that mean that because your success comes that fast that it couldn't be just being in the right place at the right time, but instead you had a connection to the Illuminati to get that done? Because I'm like, hello, do they have an 800 number? Because I would like to call them, actually. Um, and then I have a question. Are, is, is the Illuminati only for Black people? No, it's not. Oh, it's, not for, it's for everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, got it. 
All right. Well, you know, I someone kind of a lot of times people got to bring you over there and kind of like vouch for refer you, refer you in. But like, oh, they bring people to them. It's like not just them reaching out to you. Allegedly, Q. What do you think? What is behind Sexy Red's rise to fame? Is it the Illuminati or is it just pure unadulterated talent? You know what kills me about the Illuminati conversation is that you have people who will sit in coffee houses and debate with you and talk so definitively and with so much base in their voice about an organization or society that they honestly have zero proof of. <laughs> zero proof. But they will swear it exists and they will swear they know the criteria to get in it and how to get out it. They know who's in it. So let me fancy you for a little bit. It's a secret organization. And of all the years it's been around, no, none of its other members have ever come out and said they're in it. But now all of a sudden, Sexy Red gets the phone call like she don't made line for AKA. And of all the people that's in the Illuminati, She's the only one who ever announced it out loud, and she's fine. First of all, I thought from what I heard at Dunkin' Donuts that it was a secret <laughs> organization, and if people find out you're in it, you'll get killed. That's oh, what I heard, right? And then the Illuminati must be having a recruitment problem because we did a story a few months ago, and Black China, Black Tokyo, Tokyo Tony said they called her. They called her. She said they called her. And then now Sexy Red said that she got inducted. Now, here's the thing, and this is full comedy here. If I ever was to believe in Illuminati, it definitely would be after Sexy Red's induction because you can't explain to me how the hell this girl has gotten so popular. But on a serious note, and I love that Al asked the question about is the Illuminati only for Black people? I'm paraphrasing here, and I said a quote. I mean, I read a quote somewhere that spoke about self-hate and said that Black people are the only people that when other Black people get successful, it can't be because of their talent or their skill that they have to attribute it to some super, super divine, super natural event or organization as to why they're successful. And that's why it bothers me every time you see people like the Beyonce's of the world and y'all want to say, oh, they're in the Illuminati. You didn't say that about Liza Minnelli. You didn't say that about Elizabeth Taylor. Why must Beyonce be in the Illuminati? Well, for that, they talk about the Church of Scientology. On that note, I don't want my car being blown up. So coming up next, Cardi B and Offset are having marital issues, are they? And later, it seems like people will never stop acting up on airplanes. Keep her here. We'll be back. Uh -huh. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Stories that we're gonna cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World. You've been How you going to Disney ban World? black history? Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. 
They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to the soulmates in the chat. They are having their own debate about conspiracy theories. I see y'all. All right, y'all. Fans noticed that Cardi B and Offset have unfollowed each other on social media. Some believe this is a PR stunt, but others believe this could be the real deal. Have y'all ever unfollowed a significant other to be petty or block them during an argument? But, you know, you stay with them. Um, Q, what are your thoughts? <laughs> You're, you're you're no, I absolutely have not. I'm 40 years old. This is stupid. In real life, unfollowing people means nothing. Um, liking something or unliking something means nothing. And I hate that we've gotten to a place as a society where if for whatever reason I unfollow Claudia right now, then it becomes a thing. Oh, they must have broke up. Oh, they must be. How about I'm just curating my feed and I don't want to see the pictures from Gaza that Claudia is posting. It could literally be that simple. And as it relates to Offset and Cardi B, I don't want to hear nothing about a follow or unfollow until they put the house on the market. Y'all will know they having a problem in paradise when they put their house on the market. Until they put their house on the market or we see a moving truck backing somebody's bags up out that mofo, then them following or unfollowing is them being 20-something year olds having a spat. All right, Al, what do you think? I've been unfollowed. Miss Claudia Jordan unfollowed me, and I was devastated. In it's fact, not I was, devastated. I, I was devastated. I was Boy, by you was not devastated. And I, I had a reason. Devastated. I was devastated. I don't think she follows me now, but I, I think we we pushed past that. I follow, um, I follow you back. I followed you back after we made at, at our age. Because I, I, I want to, and I'm, I'm really being honest. At our age, Claudia, emotionally and mentally, when you unfollow somebody, what is that supposed to mean? What is it supposed to signal? I don't think it's an age thing. If someone is uh, disturbing your peace or posts something on their page that you don't want to see, which that was the case with us. We had a thing mm -hmm. that happened and then people were tagging me in his post. I didn't want to see it. Okay. So, and I was trying to keep the peace with us at work. And it was very delicate when you have to work with someone and you're mad at them. So I was like, well, maybe if I just don't see the stuff on my timeline for a few days, it will help me get over it faster. I was devastated. No, see, I, I, I get that part. I get the whole I'm being tagged and it's upsetting me. The part that I don't get, particularly mm -hmm. from people our age, is when they're trying to send a message. Oh, I unfollowed that bitch. And I was oh. like, okay, so how does that fix my, how does that affect my life? Like, I, I don't do it for that reason. I've okay. never like, um, you know, broke up with someone and unfollowed them unless they did something really bad or usually maybe, or it's a blocking thing, but I usually don't block people. I want them to see my grind. I want them to see my glow, but it's just usually to protect my, cause you see me and yes, I, you know, we've had discussions about me always commenting and I do, I'm very visible on social media, very active. So I'm going to, most likely I'm going to see shady comments. I'm going to see people adding me and um, it's more for, for me to like, kind of like just get over something you know what i mean okay. and then when i get over it, and i did Al, i do i did follow you back like a few months after that yeah no um, you did i'm just kidding but yeah, you know yeah. I, i've never unfollowed anyone but i have blocked someone mm. for actually claudia the reason that you just said like they're sending me messages we're we, we finished the conversation and they continue to send messages so i'm just like you can't stop them from texting you or sending you messages so you have to block them i've done that you know, I've done a temporary block before, but I don't know. As it relates to Cardi B and Offset, I love Black Love. You guys know I'm a sucker. I'm a romantic type of dude. I always was a fan of theirs and rah rah for them. But I don't know this 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 public cheating, this public split, this get back together, this now unfollowing each other. What is what is really going on? Like maybe the writing is on the wall for these two and maybe they worked hard to try to keep it together, but maybe it's time for them to go their separate ways. We know that they have two great, beautiful kids together. He's got four outside of the marriage, 
but maybe it's just time for them to go their separate ways. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think Cardi, for the same reason that we were just talking about, she's she's a, she's a very sensitive woman and she wears her heart on her sleeve. And I think when she's mad at someone, she don't want to see them in their face because she's emotional and she knows she's going to react. You know, Cardi is not mastered yet. Neither have I. I'm, this is no shade towards her. And I'm twice her age. Um, you know, the art of ignoring. I think things really affect her. I think she's affected by things. Uh, it, it's hard for her to kind of just like, you know, ignore things. So she's clearly mad at him about something and she ain't effing with him right now. So she don't want to see him on his page. But I'm surprised of him unfollowing her. That's the part I'm surprised about, mm. you know. I hope they stay together. I really, I like them together, and their kids are so cute. So, yeah, so cute. Yeah. They uh, are. All right, Boosie put out a warning for his daughter's new boyfriend. Take a look. You can cheat on her, but don't beat on her. My daughter just texted me she got a boyfriend. She want me to meet him. Be nice. Just don't hit her. You can cheat on her. I don't give a damn. Whatever. Just don't hit her. All right, I'm going to ask you what y'all think about this advice coming from a father, but I want to say something because he's talking to his daughter. Uh, I'm going to jump in on this one. I need men to realize, and maybe this is a man-woman thing, um, that for women, emotional cheating is, is ch being cheated on is very um, painful. And it's a lot of times more painful than physical um, being being tapped on, touched on. You know, when you devastate someone and you, bre you break them and you, you hurt them to their core, as maybe said on Love and Hip Hop, um, I think that has a lasting effect. I think it can be as damaging as physically assaulting them. And I just want him to know that if you care about your daughter, which I think you do. Um, I, I, I think, you know, you want to protect them emotionally and physically, not just mm. from the wounds that will go away, but what they're doing to their mental and to their heart. Al, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say this over and over and over. And you guys know I've said a hundred times, I am going to stand 10 toes down on that. Someone needs to give little Boosie a reality show. It's his, it's his comments that are so ridiculous that makes for great conversation. And in fact, he once again has landed on our talk topics here at TGIF. Although his comments are 110% absurd, <clears throat> this is where I can relate. I kind of gave him a pass and I interpreted it as this, and I don't know the full conversation because I didn't watch the full video, but if he was saying as a father that the only time that I will step in to my daughter's relationships are if you touch her, right? He said, I can't, he, but the, basically the way I interpreted it was if you cheat on her, I'm not stepping in, that's between you and her. But if you put your hands on her as a black father of that girl, you're going to have to damn deal with me. So that part, if he meant it that way, then I can rock with him. Anything else outside of that where he's talking about, you know, it's okay to cheat on this girl. I, you know, I just think that, that that's furthest from the truth. It's not cool. Um, and we got to teach our daughters not to expect it not to to feel like it's okay to be cheated on and stand in your beauty and stand in your truth and you have to be as a queen a young queen respect it all right q what do you think i don't have nothing left in my ignorance cup tonight so we can go to the next thing um damn pam said uh cheating is hurtful but still don't cheat but hitting is a whole nother thing and Arnold Northfleet said emotional hurt is just as painful as physical hurt. So, hey, Boosie, hopefully you hear this. All right. Uh, Lenny Kravitz took to his Instagram to clarify his statement about feeling excluded from Black award shows. In an interview, Kravitz said, to this day, I've not been invited to a BET thing or a Source Awards thing. He wrote, my Black musical heritage means a lot to me. The comment I made was not about Black media or the Black community. I was specifically referring to Black award shows in particular. All right. Do you think Lenny Kravitz's feelings are valid? Q, what do you think? Of course, I think they're valid. I think Lenny is being a little obtuse, and I think he might even be being a little double-minded. Yes, Lenny, you're Black, but we are not going to pretend like your style of music lends itself to the larger Black audience. And not to say that Black people don't listen to rock and roll and alternative music because we know that's ignorant and we know that they do. 
but your style of music and source awards don't even go in the same sentence. Um, okay. And historically, excuse me, BET awards have been centered around hip hop and R&B. Not to mention, Lenny, you never gave since the 90s you never even gave that you wanted to come to the cookout like that's just not even what you give and i know your mother is roxy roker but i just kind of feel like if frankie beverly before i let you before i let go came on and everybody broke out into the electric slide something just tells me that you wouldn't even know how to do it um so i, I just find it odd for somebody who historically has played in white spaces now all of a sudden is complaining about being you know invited to BET and Source and I'm not saying that this is Lenny but we're not going to pretend like there is not an undercurrent in media that stars black stars of a certain level feel and think that they are above the BET awards and the Source awards it's good to know that you wanted to come but it's not far-fetched for people to assume that you would not be interested. All right, Al, what do you think? I think you made a valid point there, Q. And <clears throat> it's okay that he wants to play in, 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 in white spaces. I think that's perfectly fine. But I felt like you, Q, that in the 90s, when he was at the top of the charts, making all the songs on all the award shows, on all the TV shows, and in all the movies, when he was singing background and writing and producing for Madonna, he never brought this up. Because uh, like you said, a lot of artists who are trying to do that crossover, look the, down to the BET Awards, look down to the Source Awards, look down to the NAACP Awards. So the timing of this conversation is what's got me a little looking at him sidewise, side eye. Now he's probably one of the most successful African-American artists in the game, in music. He has broke many records, set, set many chart, you know, top many charts, but the conversation is 10 years too late, sir, if not 20 years too late. You should have been having this conversation when you were at the top of your game, when you were booked at the MTV Awards, when you were walking the Oscar carpets, when you were going to the Met Gala. That's when you need to say, why is it the black media outlets incorporated me in? And the other thing is, uh, Lenny, if this was so important to you, then your daughter has even actually said, as recent as in 2020, that she wasn't comfortable in her blackness. Now, let, let's let that settle. Your daughter, you know, the well, only one that I know that you have, has publicly said that she did not feel comfortable in her blackness. Where does that come from, sir? You're well, a father. You love her. Um, Lenny, uh, now that we know that you would attend, we're going to expect for you to, to RSVP and, and BT would be very wise to reach out and ask for him to present now that he said this and bring some of that star power. And maybe that will attract other A-listers. I will say this. I worked on a Lenny Kravitz video a long time ago. He was more popping in the nineties, right? That's when it was a song, right. American woman, right? The BT awards didn't start until 2001. So that was kind of a little bit after, like he was really, really going to all those award shows. So I think that's probably that. And now that we know, hey, you ain't said none but a word, Lenny, because I think we'd love to have you there. And I think that would attract other A-listers. All right, coming up next, it seems like people will never stop acting up on airplanes. And later we discuss Shirley Ralph's unconventional marriage. Stay tuned. stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World's Epcot. You've been to Disney World. Black History. Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. 
Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't want to jump you, but you don't even qualify to speak on your fucking <laughs> so fucking good. TGIF, live and interactive. I need to clear this up, y'all. You are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook. Al has been in my house. I can cook. I'm going to test you out right here. What are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens? Turkey necks. Oh, <laughs> don't do me. On Fox Soul. Don't you do me. <laughs> don't try it. Welcome back to TGIF Arch, y'all. You know we like to share when we get our goodies in the mail. And we just got a new fresh box, so we're going to talk about it. This episode of TGIF is brought to you by Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first ever Bake From Frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less, and no thawing is required. The team at Wild Grain just sent me a new box. I got it. It with so much delicious stuff inside. Let me tell you all about it. They sent us a whole bunch of bread. So y'all trying to fatten me up, but it's good. And, uh, you know, it's definitely um, fantastic to have. I I've never made bread from scratch, nor will I ever try. But Wild Grain makes it where I don't have to. So, fellas, y'all both got your boxes. Um, Q, did you get your box? I did. I was actually walking out the house the other day and the box was at the door. I almost stumbled over and I ran in and put the box in the freezer. And I was so excited because they had put a bunch of chocolate chip cookies in there, guys. So I cannot wait. I haven't tasted the cookies yet, but I cannot wait to bake the cookies and taste them. And then um, they must be trying to send a message. They must be trying to say that they want me to gain 10 or 15 more pounds as well because they put a lot of bread in my box this go around, Claudia. So mm -hmm. I love sourdough bread. Holidays are coming up. I'll have a lot of use for that, but I can't wait to try the cookies and tell you guys how they taste. All right, Al, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was excited, too, to see the chocolate chip cookies queue. I was like, ooh, mm, now we've got some peach pockets, some chocolate pockets, and some apple pocket competition. But I'm with you, Q. They did send a lot of bread this go round, and I'm actually going to use it. I decided what I'm going to do, because I've been following this um, influence on Instagram called Food with YU. And they teach you how to use baked bread to make your sandwiches on, to make your sandwiches more authentic. So with all that bread, especially that good sourdough bread, and it's already like pre-baked, all you have to do is heat it up. I'm gonna start cutting it up and using it as my loaf bread and save myself a little bit of money. All right. All right. Um, well, I I got to ask you another question, Funky. How was having wild grain in your freezer helpful to you when you're hosting get-togethers? I know you have people that come over sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, I told you guys I had did when I did a small little Friendsgiving thing. It's great because you have it in there. And oftentimes when you cook, guys, we all know this. It's just that 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 one little thing that takes a meal over. Oh, you have a Thanksgiving. It's like cranberry sauce just takes it over so it's always good when you cook you never really think about bread and oftentimes when i do have people over it's like oh shoot we got this meal and, oh and we got this bread in the refrigerator too hold on y'all let me throw this in real quick and it takes the meal over the top so i i love having some wild grain in stock in my freezer at all times all right. And you can now fully customize your wild grain box so you can get any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries you like. Now, if you want a box of all bread, all pasta, or all pastries, guess what? You can have it. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. You heard me. That's free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash T, that's wildgrain.com slash T, or you can use promo code T at checkout. Promotional considerations furnished by Wild Grain. Check them out. All right, let's get back to some more topics. 
All right, so we see so many stories about passengers acting up on flights. It seems like every other day it's like that. So we're going to take a deeper look at airline passenger behavior in flights, fights or flights. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this. All right, soulmates, make sure you drop a comment in the chat and let us know what you would do. All right, an intoxicated airline passenger got a beat down after taunting another passenger. Take a look. I beat your ass. Yo, yeah, yeah, what's up? I'll knock you out for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, but for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. For sure. We'll get out, yeah, we'll get you. Hit me. I'm gonna beat your ass. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hey, get your bitch ass up. Yeah, get on camera. Well, I told y'all to be quitting the ass for the right. Quit. Vegas, you asked where I'm from. I'm from Las Vegas, bitch ass. Would you fight in this scenario or would you continue on with the flight and mind your business, Al? Would you fight or flight? <laughs> I'm on too many planes a, a month to fight because, you know, they'll throw you on their do not flight list, do not fly list in a second. I think for me, I'm too old to be fighting. Um, in this particular case, though, this guy was so disrespectful, and especially when he was making fun of the black dude's vernacular. I thought that's kind of what tilted it over for me. And at that point when he was doing that, I found it racist and disrespectful. And I wanted the young guy to beat his ass at that point. But I will say this, if F around and found out was a person, this brother right here showed you what that was all about. So all right. thumbs up to him for handling his business. Q, fight or flight? Flight, but I'm glad he got fought. Right. Like, like we can't sit up here and be like, he I'm glad karma took care of the man that was taunting him very quickly. But in real life, I'm also glad that the black guy did not get arrested as well for beating yeah. somebody up in the middle of an airplane, especially when it appeared as if you were not in any physical danger. But the guy must have been annoying the whole airplane and the whole staff that they all were on the black guy's side. I hope he didn't get in trouble because he, uh, I, on his, uh, that guy hit him, the other guy hit him first, so I'll say fight on that regard. All right. <laughs> Keep, oh, we have a, uh, Dear said, I'm a flight attendant. I need to be featured in this segment. Dear, Dear R. Okay, maybe you will. I right, keep it locked because coming up next, we're discussing Shirley Ralph's unconventional marriage. And later, is it cruel to tell a child that Santa isn't real? We'll be right back. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. jump you but you don't even qualify to speak on yourself <laughs> <You're so fucking laughs> good. tgif live and interactive i need to clear this up y'all you are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook al has been in my house I cook. i'm gonna test you out right here what are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens turkey nets oh <laughs> don't do me on fox soul don't you do me <laughs> don't try it this one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the show. All right, despite being married for 15 years, 
Shirley Ralph announced that she will be moving in with her husband. All right, y'all. Could you be married to someone and not live in the same household? Funky, let's go to you first. Absolutely. I def uh, um, knowing me as I know me now, I actually think that that would be the configuration that I would prefer. Um, having lived by myself for so long, cohabitation just does not seem like where it's at. I, I, I get too annoyed by people in my presence a lot. Um, my only thing is that I hope three years from now when we're nationally syndicated, sitting on our beautiful set doing Hot Topics, that we're not announcing that Cheryl Lee Ralph is getting a divorce. Because I'll never forget, I saw an episode of Judge Maybelline, and she was like, I don't understand how y'all could go together for 12 and 13 years, and the minute y'all get married, you can't even make it two. Well, it's like, y'all been working like this for 15 years. Y'all don't know each other in a cohabitation capacity. So there are some things that are bound to change, and hopefully it doesn't send either one of them down to the courthouse to file for divorce. All right, Al. I don't know, Q. I, I, I don't know if I could live separate from my mate. I think I need my mate with me daily. Now, could we sleep in separate bedrooms? Maybe. Uh, but I think I need my mate with me daily. I, 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 I need that support. I need that love. I need that nurturing. I need that every time I come home, I can download with someone um, but as it relates to Cheryl, what full, this is like full circle or really weird to me because she is at the prime of her career. She is, her career is going through the roof with Abbott Elementary. She showed us so much love, Fox so, so much love on the carpets, everything from the Golden Globes all the way down to um, the DGAs and the NAACP, NAACP Awards. I just love her. She, she is in Abbott Elementary, she is a teacher in Philadelphia. How interesting is it that now she's moving to Philadelphia to be with her senator husband? I just, all of it just makes me warm inside. I like it. Anything she likes, I love. So I'm in total support. I love this woman so much. I really do. I'm a huge fan of hers. And I, I was thinking like, you know, all these years she didn't live with him. I mean, no wonder why she always seems so happy. Happy. <laughs> I mean, she's probably always in a constant state of kind of like a romantic kind of feeling because like there's time to miss each other. And then, you know, you 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 look forward, there's anticipation. You don't really probably take them for granted as much when you have this space. And it gives you time to kind of do your thing. And you don't have that day to day. You left your toothpaste splatter on the mirror and your little hair on the sink. And all that. I think it probably keeps it fresh. I mean, I used to think when I was younger, if I got married, I want two houses near each other, but, you know, able to go to my own little space. And the older I get, the more I'm starting to kind of revert back to that. But girl, she's so busy that I think even with her being busy, I mean, being in the same house with him, she's still going to be gone a lot because she's going to be working still. So I don't think it's going to, maybe what probably won't be so, so much of a shock for her. Um, Katie Pop 3 says, hell yeah, that's my dream marriage. Separate bedrooms, separate houses. Let's do it. All right. Uh -huh. On the topic of relationships, it looks like Tamar Braxton and Jeremy Robinson are officially back together. Jeremy posted a photo of himself alongside an extremely long caption. He wrote, I am incredibly touched by how much she fought for me. I'm committed to loving this woman forever. And I appreciate all the love and support that have come from our family, friends, and supporters. Do you think the caption, uh, do you think the longer the caption, the more doomed the relationship? Or do you think that means, you know, he's had a lot to get up his chest? What do you think about their chances, Q? What do you think about him saying that, you know, she really fought to save him? I think that it's contradictory to the story that we did last, the last story that we did. <laughs> Which one is it, sis? I mean, y'all <laughs> sending two different messages. Tamar, you was in the club. We could barely hear you. And you were saying that you broke up with him now his message is saying you fought for him after we all were under the impression that he dumped you here is where my commentary starts and stops it's really none of our business and i think that i am going to continue to carry the attitude going into 2024 that adults especially people who are a little seasoned and long in the tooth their ins and outs of their relationship should not be playing out on 
Instagram. That way, when something goes wrong or right, you can take your wins and your losses in private. Yeah, because people do like to throw it back in your face and you'd be like, uh, damn, I'm the one who told it's them. No, it, 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 it's, it's literally bringing unnecessary drama into your life for no re Why would I give y'all a front seat to the volatile things in my life that are going to bring me pain and embarrassment? Why would I do that? Joshua Shield says, Tamar realized there isn't a squat diddly dot 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 in the streets. And Toya Crowder said, two toxic people together. Okay, sorry. Two toxic people together. Uh, damn, all the comments are coming. I'm sorry. It went through so fast. Two toxic people together makes sense. Sounds like her and Vince all over again. That's what she said. All right. It just mm -hmm. went up too fast. Al, what do you think? You know, I guess I'll say what nobody else would say. I don't like how this feels. Uh, it, it, it feels like the the two of them are feeding the media and feeding the blogs. Definitely feels like he's feeding the blogs. It's not making me like him anymore. I don't like him for Tamar, sorry. Um, the couple looks awkward to me. But at the end of the day, it's all about who she likes and who she loves. So if she likes him, she loves him. And the fact that he made it very well known after he let that relationship go, that she fought to get him back, then I'm going to follow her lead. But, you know, my gut tells me that uh, it's going to be a different story next week. But like I said, Tamar is going to be beautiful regardless. She's successful. She can date anybody she wants to date. This is who she's chosen. So if you believe in her and support her, then you need to support this relationship. Jeremy, don't do Tamara like that. You are not the celebrity she is. And you got to protect. You got to protect. You got to protect. And you saying that is not helping the narrative, I think. I'd be a little bit irritated from that. Which part? The she fought for him? Yeah. Oh, and trust and believe, it was intentional. Yeah, oh, it, it was. Intentional. It's for giving sure. a little bit petty, like, she tr she fought for me. Like, right. it seems like he wants to be the baddie. And in <clears throat> it was, And it was in response to that post she did last week talking about I broke up with him. No, Tamar, this further cements that he broke up with you and it right. sounded like you came back begging for him. She fought for me, says, baby, baby, please take me back. And That's what me. it sounds like. And as her, as the, the the spouse or the partner of a celebrity like that, he should probably consider that what that does to her public image. He should protect her a little bit more than I think. All right, y'all. Good conversation. Coming up, is it cruel to tell a child that Santa isn't real? Stay tuned. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. McMillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Again, you're having a great night at Disney World's Epcot. You've been to Disney World. Black history. Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and 
kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect Welcome back to TGIF. All right, uh, so let me take a look at this tweet. My friend is mad at me because I told her daughter Santa isn't real and her daughter believes me. I don't have kids, so did I cross boundaries? Let me know for real because if you ask me why the bleep you want to keep lying to your kid. <laughs> Funky. So, yes, you, um, you definitely did cross the boundary. All right. It, 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 it's not your place to indoctrinate somebody else's child one way or another. I'm not a parent, but I've read a lot of parents say, even though we know it's fake, uh, please allow children to have their innocence for as long as possible. Here is where I publicly stand on it. I definitely will not intentionally go out of my way to sway anyone's child one way or the other with anything However, if your child just happens to be in my sphere and I'm having a conversation with Claudia Jordan about how Santa isn't real and they hear it, that's a whole separate thing. And you can't fault me for not living your lie. Now, I won't go out my way to tell your child that, but to expect me in my day to day to consciously help you live your lie is a bit much. OK, Al, what do you think? Am I the only one that your parents use the Santa Claus to make you act right, to do your chores, to do your homework, to, to, to come in from the playground on time? My mother used to say, I'm going to tell Santa Claus. And when I tell you I would act right, like immediately, I would act right. I wish that person would have leaked to me that Santa Claus wasn't real, she would have had to deal with my mother. Because I swear, I think my mother used that at least until I was 12 years old. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, it worked for me. So I definitely think she crossed the boundary because for some people that's a camaraderie, right? With your kid, that's a, that's a space of sharing. That's a space of understanding, you know, Christmas. It, it, it gives a, an opportunity for the parents to teach the kid about Christmas. And for people that are Christians, you know, Mary and Joseph and the birth of Christ. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we could, of course, have a deeper, take a deeper dive into the how Santa Claus has absolutely nothing to do. I mean, you know, the man in the, the red suit, the jolly man coming down your chimney, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch from Jesus Christ being born and all that. But like, if that's the culture in your household, that is a culture and that is up to the parents. That is not your place. And, you know, I do kind of miss when I was little and naive, like the innocence of like, I remember watching those Christmas shows and thinking like Rudolph, like looking for Rudolph for real. And yeah, our parents are totally playing in our faces and lying to us. And they probably were manipulating us to, to do what they wanted us to do for the whole year. And the reward would be Santa Claus actually coming and bringing us a gift. But I used to like thinking that there was a tooth fairy and Santa. Cause I, I just feel like when you're younger, Thing just seems so magical and mystical and just kind of fun, you know? But yeah, it's not your place to tell the kids. So, so. Claudia, there's a good question on there I want to get. Somebody says, Q, does Isaac believe in Santa? Isaac is my nephew. Um, to be honest with you, that's a very good question. I don't know. I know that when I just had him uh, recently, I don't speak in terms of Santa or whatever. So it, when I'm having conversations with him about Christmas, it's, what do you want? What would you like? I don't know if he believes in Santa or not. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Your kids and kids are going to have enough time to be cynical and grouchy like we are. So let them have the first five, six years of their life. To you know, I don't, I, to be honest with you guys, I don't know that I ever believe. I mean, I guess maybe in kindergarten and I just don't remember it. But I don't remember me or my siblings ever tap dancing around who Santa's coming. You, got, you know we what? I, I work with two big humbugs here. No, whoa, whoa. No, I believe in Santa. I like Santa. In oh, our yeah. household, my we, we got to pick our Christmas gifts. And then there was always one or two gifts under the tree that said from Santa. But we knew that those were like the extra gifts that my stepmom was getting us that was off our list. But I don't know that we ever believed in it. 
Poor Q. You, you didn't have a chance. You did not have a chance. All right. I want to thank Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for joining me, of course. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Crockett's Corner, and we'll see you back tomorrow. All right, y'all have a good one. See you later, soulmates.